Hey everybody, Jabman025 here. Today I'm taking a look at my 88th Master Grade, the Gundam Age 1 Normal. This is the lead from the first generation of Mobile Suit Gundam Age. So let's have a look and see what we got with this Master Grade. First, looking at the torso, the inner frame. I'll go ahead and say this first off. This is a whole new inner frame, and a lot of it doesn't make a whole lot of sense while you're building it. But it makes sense when it's done. So just follow the instructions, and it'll all turn out okay. See up here on the shoulders, you have a poly cap that slides out, and that will lock into place in the center with that little tooth there. But that allows for a lot of movement. You see flit here in the little cockpit. It's going to slide right into this center section here and pop into place. You're going to build the armor up around it. One kind of neat feature you see here is you see there's a screen that pops down in front. At first I didn't understand what that was and it's a bit of a pain in the butt to get it in there. But once you get it in there, the screen will pop down in front of Flit when the cockpit is closed and that's kind of neat. As for the A, you can see it's a piece of clear green but on the back we have a double-sided silver sticker. Both sides are silver. You can see here and it's going to slap right under the back. Lining it up is a little tricky, but once you do it, you get this nice reflect, refraction through the gr clear green. And it looks really nice. And you slap that in there. You can see a fair bit of lining all over this kit. Not a ton, but you do have a lot of detail work to do, so keep that in mind. And that's a really nice look for that A there. You slide open this white piece here. Open it down. You can see that screen there pops up. So you can see Flit there sitting in the cockpit. And that's a fair bit about a detail. I really like that screen that pops up and moves down. It really, you know, accents the cockpit. Slap that down, and it's all reattached. The spoiler on the back, which I f still find stupid, but whatever. The shoulder armor. The shoulder armor is a little loose on this kit. It may be a little too loose and it you know, flops around a little bit too much. You see we have vents. There are vents all over this thing. Vents on the arms, vents on the legs. So apparently the Gunnam Age 1 gets very, very hot or it doubles as a giant AC unit for the Diva. We're not sure which. Regardless, there are vents all over the place and that does add a little bit of detail to the kit. Elbow bend, nice big elbow bend, no problems there. And you see, on the forearm here, you have this section here that is going to twist. This comes in useful later when we attach the shield, and I'll show you that in a bit. But this happens on both arms, so you can get a twisting action, so you get to even a little bit more movement out of the forearm, which is kind of nice. The hands. Kind of a strange thing happening here with the hands. We have an individually articulated thumb, which you don't see that often. We have an individually articulated wrist, which kind of reminds me of the Master Grade Exia, or the Master Grade Gundam 00 Riser. But you have interchangeable fingers on this kit. Much bigger than the old seed or the wing kits. Trigger finger, holding finger, fist, and open hand. Why they just didn't do individually articulated fingers on this kit, I don't know. I think it would have worked better, but say lovey. Here you see the arm where it attaches into the shoulder. You can see that plug, and you really get the sense, okay, this is how this is going to attach. Then you get the attachment for the Titus and the Sparrow, and it plugs right into that polycap there. And you can see exactly how they're going to switch these around from piece to piece. On the head, you have an option to make here, or a choice to make, rather. These come in clear green, and you get double-sided silver stickers for the back, so you get that refraction through the eyes and that upper part of the forehead. But you can also use these stickers. Now, if you use these stickers, you don't got to do any painting. If you use the double-sided silver, you got to paint that black section in. Faceplate, you can see the grooves are all the way through, so there's no lining you have to do here. It kind of reminds me of the... RX-78 version 2.0. Skirt armor, the most complicated set of skirt armor I've ever seen on a Master Grade. 
This is mainly for the interchanging parts of the Titus and the Sparrow, but it gets to be a pain in the butt. Hips are variable. You see each section can move independently. And we have a little slap back here, a little slap, a little slap back here on the back that opens up, and you can put the gun on that. Beam sabers we have here on the side skirt armor, they slap into place there. And you see more lining down here. Not a ton, but again, more lining. Now, this is one of the problems of this kit. There ain't a whole lot of problems with this kit, but this is one. The skirt armor is very, very loose. The side pieces on the skirt armor will be coming off all the time. And the connections where the white section of the skirt armor meets the yellow isn't very good. On the front, it ain't that bad. On the back, it's, well, bad. See, you knock that loose, and then that little white piece will just be hanging free, and that's going to happen a lot. The ankles, kind of a neat trick here. They have a free-floating piece here that is just held in place by a round-bottom poly cap. So you get all sorts of movement. It can go just about anywhere you want. Now, I will say for the problems with the skirt armor, the feet and the ankles and the legs on this kit are superb. Virtually no problems at all with this kit's legs, feet, and ankles. Excellent movement. See, I guess what? More lining. But ankle armor moves anywhere you want. Feet move anywhere you want. No problems. Again, more vents on the legs. Up here on the upper thigh and on the bottom of the leg, too. The knee section is kind of weird. It's another piece where when you're building it, it doesn't make any sense. And then once you finish building it, you go, oh, okay, now I get it. <laughs> so when you're building the knee, it's going to not make a whole lot of sense, but don't worry, it'll come back later. Bottom leg, guess what? More vents and a little bit more lining. Big bend out of the knee, no problem. Nice strong attachment into the hips. You see this section on the front? This comes a solid gray. Technically, it should be jet black. You have two options. You can repaint it, or they give you these stickers. I can understand why they did this, because this is the only piece that's jet black on the whole kit, so you don't need a little plate just for this. But you can use stickers, you can paint it. I just use the stickers, because the stickers were very clean cut and very well done, so figured why not. You can see when you bend the leg, the kneecap pops open, and then you can push it right back down when it's straight. And here you see Gunna Mage 1 standing up all on his own. The legs on this kit act for almost perfect balance. That's what I will say. You have to be do something really crazy to get this guy to fall over. The balance is one of the best I've ever seen on any Master Grade. You see, for if you do the shake test, nothing's falling off, nothing's flying loose, no problems. little size comparison. On the right you see one of the old wing kits, the heavy arms. See, he's got a good head and shoulders on him, and even the RX-78 version 2.0, he's a little bit taller than him, so this is pretty tall for a Master Grade kit. And you see him all decaled up. Decals are okay, nothing to write home about. You get a couple of nice Federation logos, some nice red lining lo logos, but truthfully, for the most part, there's nothing really to write home about. You get some white stripes for the uh, spoiler on the back, but, eh, decal's nice, nothing great. Accessories, beam sabers, too short, too long. Absolutely no problem holding on to this, in fact, it kind of comes a bit of a too good of a connection. Once you get the beam sabers into the hands, getting them back out again, and getting the fingers out of the hand again is really tricky. So, they're never going to drop them, that's not a problem, but interchanging the weapons can be a little tricky. The gun, or beam rifle, this is the original beam rifle we used in episode one, connects into the bottom of the arm and into the hand. And again, same issue. Ultra strong connection, maybe a little too strong, because getting it back out again is a pain in the butt. Luckily, to create the dot rifle, all you do is slap this section on the front of that gun. You can see it's got clear green sections on both guns. They give you stickers again, but it comes in clear green, so... Your choice. Now, if you want to twist it, you can line both scopes up and bring out this handle here. And you can go for the two-handed shot, a la Gundam Unicorn. 
and a bat's rifle can make one heck of a bang, a la Gundam Unicorn. And you see the shield here, nothing too terribly fancy. You got a connection that's going to connect into this forearm section. Now remember how I said that twisted? Here's why. So you can have the shield either at the back or to the side of the Gundam, your call. And since the connection is on a twistable poly cap, you can move it anywhere you please. And you get one nice big Federation logo for the front of the shield. And the backpack there with all the thrusters, everything's put together, everything's decaled up, all good to go. Attachment for an action base is rock solid. No Exia situation here. You want to put it on an action base and get it airborne? Not a problem. Personally for me, I'm going to have them based on the ground, but it's up to you. Final thoughts on this kit? I'm giving this kit a thumbs up. This is a good solid kit with a really neat internal frame, and if you like internal frames, this is a good build. This kit has excellent balance. One of the best balance kits I've ever seen. Feet, ankles, hips, legs, near perfect. This kit has some flaws though. The accessories are kind of bland. All you get is the beam sabers, the shield, and the gun. Granted, that's all you get with the age one normal. It's a little sticker heavy, and that skirt armor doesn't work that well. Do I think this is the leader for new, new leader for kit of the year? No, I think Duel's got that still firmly in his back pocket. We'll see if he hangs on to it. But this is still a good kit. Thumbs up. If you want it, pick it up. Well, gang, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this review. Hope you found it informative. Please leave a comment. You guys know I love reading them. If you got any questions, ask them. I'll answer them as best I can. I'll see you guys next time with another review, and thanks for watching again. Oh, and uh, one more thing. I'm just saying that Gundam Age skews towards a younger audience. There's nothing wrong with that. I am no baby Gundam boy. No baby Gundam.